Once called the great state of Biloxi because it insisted on going its own way, our little city with its French colonial roots has always been home to dreamers, artists, visionaries, and other independent souls. After the Civil War, Confederacy President Jefferson Davis was able to draw strength from the Gulf waters that greeted him daily, whispering comfort for a cause that was lost. Beauvoir means beautiful view in French. Jefferson Davis was looking for a spot to write his memoirs, and uh, he used the cottage on the east side, and we call it the library cottage, where he wrote the rise and fall of the Confederate government. On the Sunday after Easter in 1960, Biloxi physician Dr. Gilbert R. Mason Sr. led a peaceful wait-in protest against the segregation of public beaches along Highway 90. The wait-in sparked mob violence and would be known thereafter as Bloody Sunday. Soon after, a Biloxi NAACP branch was formed, with Dr. Mason installed as president. In 1964, under his leadership and strong efforts by moderates in the black and white communities, Biloxi's public schools were peacefully desegregated. Today, a historic marker near the Biloxi Lighthouse honors this visionary hero of the civil rights movement. And a section of Highway 90 has been designated the Dr. Gilbert R. Mason Sr. Memorial Highway. Chicago architect Louis Sullivan, who designed so many modern urban skyscrapers, escaped the big city to the wisteria-covered coast cottage he built, renewing himself on the banks of Davis Bayou. He chose to buy property uh, here on the coast so he could relax. I think what inspired him here in this mixture of natural forms of the coast led him to some of his most organic designs in his architecture later on. The Biloxi Sound the Mississippi Gulf Coast had, in that way, a great influence on changing the path of American architecture. Life has always been laid back in Biloxi, slower and open to those with different ideas. The homegrown genius, George Orr, was sufficiently inspired to declare himself the greatest art potter that ever lived. George Orr was a great promoter and marketer. He was considered quite the town character. He always felt he was the odd man out. And I really think that his personality informed his work as one who could think really creatively out of the box. And I think that's what gives him his modern spirit. First a functional potter, Orr was transformed by a fire in 1894 that destroyed most of downtown Biloxi, as well as his studio and all of his previous work. He really went through a rebirth. His creative experience was transformed by the fire. So he rebuilt a new facility called the Biloxi Art Pottery. He painted it bright pink, and his work really began to um, develop in ways that the modernists today feel was a forerunner of the modern spirit as we know it. Frank Gehry, perhaps today's greatest architect, recognizing a kindred independent spirit, designed a Biloxi museum bearing Orr's name. When he stood at this site and there were uh, 36 trees instead of 18 as we have today. He said, this is perfect. First thing came to my mind was dancing with the trees. And I had the idea of the pods because it meant you could separate and you could have different shows and different pieces without disturbing the others. So they could have a permanent collection, a changing collection. And the reason they bow out, you put the pot there, it's got a surround, it's got space around it. Biloxi seems to nurture the creative souls of artists. Dusty Bonger, for example, one of the country's few female abstract expressionist painters, left the exploding New York City art scene in the 1960s to return to her hometown, where she continued to paint in a place that allowed her to work without pressure. Her first style was the early representational style, lots of local scenes done in oil pastels. She moved on to other styles, the Surrealist style, finally abstract expressionism, which really became her great love, and she was Mississippi's first true modernist painter. Inspired by the wildlife that lured him regularly to Horn Island a few miles off the Biloxi shore, 
Walter Anderson, Dusty Bonger's friend and contemporary, created watercolors that continue to astonish all who see them. And he became really one with nature. He was very, very attracted to what he saw and what he heard. And that is where many, many of his works came from. And he's today counted as one of America's greatest watercolorists. Today, dozens of other Biloxi artists follow the example set by Dusty Bonger and Walter Anderson. The rich and sensuous environment you can feel in the air around Biloxi also fed the entrepreneurial spirit of men from diverse backgrounds. In 1881, entrepreneurs from Biloxi who had the interest of workers and to take advantage of the abundant seafood got together and with $8,000 started the first seafood factory at the foot of Raynor Street in Biloxi. With the invention of artificial ice in the mid-19th century and the coming of the railroad in the 1870s, the Biloxi seafood industry was going to experience a boom. By about 1900, there were 12 major canneries in Biloxi bordering Front Beach, as the old Highway 90 area was once called. By about 1901, 1902, approximately six million pounds of oysters had been harvested and shelled and canned, and about four million pounds of shrimp. We were called the seafood capital of the world. Master boat builder Bill Holland has personally protected another maritime tradition. Using his hands like George Orr, Holland continues to build wooden Biloxi schooners the way it's been done for nearly 200 years. In 1898, the French-educated New Orleans-born chemist Edward Bark moved to Biloxi and purchased the Artesian Bottling Works. A few years later, he perfected what was to become a coastal favorite, Bark's Root Beer. His slogan, drink Bark's, it's good. The sky's the limit is literally true for former NASA astronaut Fred Hayes, born in Biloxi and one of only 24 people in the world who have flown to the moon. Biloxi's unique appeal is as strong today as ever, inspiring writers like John Grisham to set many of his best-selling novels in Biloxi and thinly disguise some of the city's bigger-than-life characters in them. One of the characters in The Runaway Jury was a latecomer to the jury and that character was a very thinly veiled Lau Banger, the son of Dusty and Archie Banger. The intoxicating natural world combined with the broad ethnic mix of cultures and people helped make Biloxi different from other cities. It's a magical and seductive place. A song by Gulf Coast Margaritaville legend Jimmy Buffett says it well. Down around Biloxi Pretty girls are dancing in the sea. Here in Biloxi, you may find yourself they doing the same thing. Look like sisters.